Hello everyone, this is Anyman reminding you that you have the power to further help you with your with learning how to use that power. We bring you the Batman Handbook. We're gonna bring you chapter one, of course, section three. How to Assemble a Utility Belt Batman may have spent years honing his body into a living weapon, but that doesn't mean he's willing to leave anything to chance when fighting his unrelenting war on crime. He's always well-armed and well-prepared with a variety of non-lethal weapons and miniaturized crime-fighting tools, all carried into battle in his well-stocked utility belt. With few exceptions, the Dark Knight's belt contains equipment that is based on real and available technology. With the right funds and a little bit of ingenuity, a fledgling superhero can replicate Batman's utility belt and arsenal. Obtain a lightweight web or nylon belt. Batman's utility belt is lightweight and streamlined. It features a buckle with a quick-release hasp for easy removal. 8 cylindrical metal tubes dispensing various small tools and gadgets, and 9 rectangular box-like compartments that contain large collapsible or foldable equipment. For your own utility belt, remember that miniaturization is key. Your belt should not be bulky or carry weight that can hamper your actions. Be sure to employ shatter or crush-proof containers for your accoutrements. A military web belt or reinforced nylon climbing harness belt is best suited for this use. The former, the military web belt, will allow you to add pouches for storage, while the latter, the nylon climbing harness belt, is also useful for your climbing escapades while crime fighting. Decide what you will use as a batarang. Batman's signature weapon comes in several shapes and sizes, each with a specific function. Batarangs modeled after on traditional boomerangs are designed as reusable weapons. They are thrown to KO or disarm an opponent in an arc that brings the weapon right back to the user. Most batarangs are foldable and collapsible, and several are hidden in various spots on Batman's utility belt. Those with serrated cutting edges can be used to slice through bands when wielded like a knife. Shuriken-shaped batarang can be thrown to pin a foe against a wall. See How to Throw a Batarang, page 54. In the absence of true batarangs, outfit your belt with 5 to 10 throwing stars, and at least two standard boomerangs. Consider obtaining a small digital camera, or better yet, a palm-top computer. The Caped Crusader's digital micro camera is barely half the size of a ballpoint pen. As commercially available digital photography continues to improve, it will be no time at all before you'll be able to purchase one just as compact or smaller. In the meantime, invest in a high-end cell cellular phone that features a digital camera. This will give you the means to photograph crime scene evidence as well as a mode of communication for contacting the authorities or your sidekick. Like top-of-the-line cellular phones, many current palm tops feature built-in digital cameras and removable memory sticks, both a boon for photographing incriminating evidence. Perhaps more crucial, your palm top can provide wireless internet access to, reach, to research information while you are in the field. Linked to the supercomputer in your headquarters, your palm top can also take full advantage of your ever-growing information arsenal. Be sure to use encrypted transmissions to preserve your secrets and prevent compromising your identity. Outfitting your PDA with a palm-sized GPS, Global Positioning System, locator, can help you determine your near-exact geographic location and offer street-level maps for every, nearly every major city, especially the metropolis in which you choose to carry out your crime-fighting mission. Until Batman... Until, like Batman, you have committed every street and alleyway of your home base to memory, the GPS locator will be an invaluable tool. Use flexicuffs or, similar, or simple cable ties instead of regular handcuffs. 
lightweight and flexible plax plastic or nylon flexicuffs are a good alternative to metal handcuffs, since you can carry several at a time and you don't need to worry about handcuff keys. Flexicuffs are tightened to a locked position with a ratcheted fitting, and are removed by simply snapping them with a special cutting tool. Trussing up an opponent is quick and easy, and you don't have to worry that your captive might pick the lock. Simple cable ties will also have the desired effect. Batman's utility belt contains a grappling hook or grapnel and jump line. Flexicuffs, a cellular phone with a secure link to the bat cave and a digital camera. Crush-proof pa pouches on his utility belt. Gas capsules such as tear gas, smoke gas, regurgitant gas, etc. A tamper-proof buckle with self-destruct mechanism. A batarang. And a miniature medical kit, which includes epinephrine, auto-injectors, antibiotics, etc. Be prepared with a gas and aerosol arsenal. Keep various commercially available forms of tear gas, pepper spray, or mace in pocket-sized aerosol canisters, one half ounce, which is 15 milliliters, or larger. Each of these can temporarily incapacitate an attacker when sprayed in the face. All cause the eyes to water uncontrollably and thus briefly blind your opponent. Many of these irritant gases are also available in large canister foggers, which can project a thick mist to deter multiple attackers, but won't be portable on your belt. Military and police forces utilize flashbang grenades to stun their quarries with a blinding flash and correspondingly loud concussive bang with minimal explosive force or destruction. Smoke grenades let you down a thick cover, but require that the user have a gas mask at the ready to avoid inhaling or getting gaseous irritants in his eyes. Either type of non-lethal grenade can cause fires if not wielded properly. In recent years, Batman has added regurgitant gases to his belt. These are deployed in capsule form and release a cloud of incapacitating gas that makes anyone inhaling them retch uncontrollably. Needless to say, there is nothing like projectile vomiting to take the fight out of any boastful bad guy. If possible, keep a portable gas mask or rebreather on your belt. Using a gas arsenal necessitates keeping a gas mask at the ready so that the irritant gas stored in your own utility belt doesn't overcome you. Batman's gas mask fits seamlessly over his cowl for added protection. You, could, you should consider a mask that provides NBC, nuclear, biological, chemical, protection, with a shatter and scratch proof face shield that allows at least 180 degrees of peripheral viewing area. Use a mask that is fitted to the size and shape of your head and face, with an optimal seal to prevent any gases from penetrating. Ideally, your mask should come with replacement filter cartridges. Be fitted with an anti-fog mouth and nose cup to prevent exhalations from condensing inside the face shield and obscuring vision, and have a voice emitter so that you can still be heard and heeded by victims or villains. In addition to a foldable gas mask, Batman carries with him several compact rebreathers. While a gas mask allows you to continue fighting in a terrestrial environment, a rebreather can provide you with several minutes of breathable air when trapped underwater. See how to use a rebreather, page 162. Include a set of decel jump lines and a grappling hook. For climbing up or repelling down the sides of buildings, Batman employs a CO2 propelled grapnel gun and decel jump lines. His gloves feature an integral ascender rail to help slow his jump line descent. For your purposes, your utility belt should be stopped with a collapsible grappling hook, bungee or climbing cords, pitons, and other climbing gear. When all else fails, a taser or stun gun will come in quite handy. Both tasers and stun guns are designed for self-defense, but can be used to stop a fighter or incapacitate a fleeing felon. Police pistol grip tasers take advantage of EMD, electromuscular disruption technology, to shock an attacker within a range of 15 to 20 feet, which is 4.5 to 6 meters, by launching twin penetrating probe darts and zapping his central nervous system with 50,000 volts of electricity. The taser is non-lethal and causes no permanent injury. The darts are launched via a compressed air cartridge, so you may need to keep 
to carry spares as well as extra batteries if used multiple times during a long night of crime fighting. Toggled stun guns, on the other hand, are close contact weapons that employ a coruscating charge of electricity that sparks between twin electrodes. Simply touch it to your opponent, and he'll be immobilized with an electric shock ranging from 50,000 to 200,000 volts, depending on the size and power source of your stun gun. Just a few seconds of shock will cause even the strongest foe to lose balance and muscle control, or become dazed and confused from the electricity coursing through their musculature and neural networks. Maximum Utility The Dark Knight also stocks the following optional items in his utility belt. Acetylene torch for cutting through metal. Batmobile wireless remote control for bringing the Batmobile to Batman when he needs it most. Explosives for disabling locks, scuttling getaway vehicles, or destroying a villain's secret weapon. Fingerprint kit for identifying the careless culprit. First aid kit including antiseptics, bandages, epinephrine, auto-injectors, Mark I kit, etc. Infrared flashlight or night vision goggles for seeing in the dark. Laser for burning through substances impervious to an acetylene torch. Skeleton keys to pick any lock or permit access to most tumbler lock doors. A few oddball items Batman has concealed in his utility belt at one time or another include a single marble, replaces the sound of footsteps when rolled down a flight of stairs, bat freeze pill, lowers one's body temperature when ingested, paper and ink for that last minute missive, Assorted contact lenses, used in disguises. A giant Batman balloon, complete with compressed helium for quick inflation. A belt radio Geiger counter, which broadcasts AM, FM, and shortwave radio frequencies, and functions as a Geiger counter. And a blank metal disc, revealing Batman's true identity when treated with a special chemical. I'd like to point out the following. Personal notes. One, you don't need a utility belt if you have multiple pockets in your, out, in your clothing. In fact, Black Scout Survival has connections with companies that sell what's known as Gray Man Clothing, as well as other types of tactical clothing, which you can use to hide important miniature tools on your person for later use, such as lock picking kits or a makeup kit for faking injuries or miniature first aid kits. You also should not You also should not uh, rule out the possibility of having a regular belt and tying pouches onto it. In feudal Japan, this is how people carried things around, as their clothing rarely had anything like a pocket. And it was a lot more convenient to just untie a pouch on your belt to get to what was inside. Especially since you could tie, untie pouches from the belt and throw them away. Also, should, you should consider... Also, you should consider not using shuriken. They are considered dangerous weapons and require a considerable amount of training and skill to be able to use properly. You definitely can't pin someone to the wall with any of them, no matter how hard you throw them, unless the wall is made of a certain type of material. The use of a boomerang is an option. But honestly, if you need to use some sort of projectile to incapacitate someone without killing them, 
You have multiple options, and you don't really have to go with one that you bring with you to a fight, especially since carrying weapons can get you in trouble. Carrying weapons of any kind can get you in trouble, and most weapons that you can carry that would be considered legal can also be improvised from material around you. Unless you have such weapons on your person already and have the permits to carry and use them. As for the use of a gas or aerosol arsenal, you may not even need to use projectile weapons if you have the use of such a gas or aerosol arsenal, especially tear gas or mace. Another option that you should keep in mind is the use of Another thing that you should get out of your mind, rather, is the use of skeleton keys. Very few modern locks will react to a skeleton key. They will... Skeleton keys are an older type of uh, lock picking and lock opening tool. And most locks today have been designed so that a skeleton key will not work on them. Another note of importance is the use of this Belt Radio Geiger counter, which broadcasts AM, FM, and short ra shortwave radio frequencies and functions as a Geiger counter. You can use a portable handheld AM FM radio for the same basic effect. If you switch the radio to AM and turn the dial all the way to the lowest setting for the uh, stations, turn it all the way to the lowest setting past the first station, before you get to the first station, and then extend the antenna on it, you can use it as a sort of Geiger counter to pick up uh, electromagnetic radiation. As to a shortwave radio frequency, I couldn't really tell you for sure whether or not a walkie-talkie would do the same job, but if it has the same if it functions on the same premises, it is it does stand to reason that it would. Then again, I'm not an expert, so by all means Contact an expert about that, not me. And of course the giant balloon may seem absurd. And in fact, it may be absurd. So instead, consider the use of a makeshift scarecrow as a decoy to lure your enemies away from your position or to distract them from what you're doing. If they are lured to the scarecrow, you can sneak up on them. And if they're scared away from the scarecrow and you should happen to show up in front of them as they're running the opposite direction, Depending on how overwhelmed they are with fear, their rational mind may not process that you can't be in two places at one time, and it will give you a psychological advantage. They may think that you are capable of such a feat, or that you have multiple partners helping you to do the same task at the same time. That's not to mention the fact that using decoys of some sort has worked for centuries, especially in combat, to help distract the enemy from your own work and from your own movements. One commonly uh, 
portrayed gag in war movies as well as other types of uh, action movies is the, to take a soldier's helmet or a person's hat place it on a stick and wave it just beyond some form of cover or concealment and see what the reaction is that they get. Shoninki talks about using, uh, talks about how at the time of its, of, uh, its writing, there, there was a technique for creating a life-size doll of a person dressing it up, throwing it into a room, and observing the reactions of the people sleeping in that room. Other such manuals include the use of scarecrows and analogies, as well as the use of small animals, especially rodents, released from an operative's pocket or other uh, form of concealment to enter into a location that they're spying on so that any noise that's made is attributed to those animals rather than a person and they can continue their espionage without impunity all of these are things to think about but of course the techniques that we just covered were also used by Batman successfully in fiction for 75 years. So, And they did help to give rise to the use of utility belts by police and military personnel. This has been Any Man, reminding you that you have the power. Use it wisely and use it well.